let's look at multi-signatures with Schnorr signatures. And this is, again, a simplified version because I'm not telling you what's supposed to be in the hash function. As we recall from last video, um, we just take two key pairs. So let xA and A and xB and B be the second key pair. Again, big A and big B, you can think of them as Bitcoin addresses. We know already A equals XA times our generator point and B equals XB times our generator point. Now, one thing that we can do is we can create a common address from these two Bitcoin addresses by just adding these public keys, which is the same as adding the private keys and multiplying both with the a generator point. Now we recall how we create signatures for our keys. The signature equation for key A would be SA equals KA plus H times XA and for SB in the similar way. KA was the nonce and we have to create this committed value, this public key or this point corresponding to the nonce by multiplying the nonce with the generator point. Each signature can be verified as we have seen in the previous video. And the verification goes as we knew before, we just have to multiply our signature equation with G and this uh, produces the verification equation. But what happens if we now add the two partial signatures? And I call them partial because SA was the signature for key A and SB was the signature for B. As we can see, we just have to add the random nonces and then we have to add the private keys. Before we look at the verification equation and understand what this has to do with multi-signatures, I want you to pause for a little second and really try to understand what we are doing and why this is actually crucial and crazy. When we add the S values of our signature equation, what we're actually doing is we're adding two private keys. And the thing is, in a multi-signature setting, we should not exchange private keys, right? If you and me create a multi-signature address, I should keep my private key and you should keep your private key. And in no circumstance we should exchange private keys. But here in this equation, you can actually see that the private keys have been added. And the thing is, we are doing this without exchanging the private key themselves, right? The private key is hidden in this entire summation. There is this random value, which we also didn't reveal. So in that sense, it is okay to do that. And the only question now comes is, what does this help us? And this is what we're going to look at right now. We can look what the verification equation would look like by multiplying this entire equation with the generator point G. So let us give a name to the combined signature. Let's call it SAB and multiply SAB times our generator point. The way how we do this is we have to multiply each term. So KA times G plus KB times G and the third term is actually just a product so we keep the hash function and the sum of the private keys which is xa plus xb and we multiply this again with the generator point g ka times g is ra and kb times g is rb like we had in our former partial signatures now xa plus xb is the sum of private keys and would be the private key of the combined address but multiplied with g it is actually the sum of the public keys and this is really really crazy because what this leads to is if we look at our verification equation sa times g now is ra plus rb which is just the sum of nonces plus the hash of our message times the sum of the public keys. This verification equation looks exactly like the verification equation of a single partial nor signature as we have seen before. Right? Our signature is the sum of the S values and the sum of the R values. And then of course, uh, this is the signature for the Bitcoin address that corresponds to the sum of the public keys of our old Bitcoin addresses right, A plus B. As in part one, I want to show some live coding of how this stuff works, but I first want to draw a few conclusions of why this stuff is really cool. You can't do this stuff in ECDSA in our current signature scheme with Bitcoin. And adding stuff for a mathematician and nerd like me, it's just crazy, you know, I just love adding stuff. It started when I was a small kid and it's just the best thing to do. One plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, and it's, you know, Fibonacci numbers, adding numbers, adding signatures, I don't care, it's awesome. But okay, let's stop with this crazy, like, nerd stuff and get to the real reasons. One thing is you can get one common address from two public keys, and the signature verification just looks like 
a regular pay to public key hash. So whenever you spend from this address, people don't know that this was actually a multi-signature address and a multi-signature wallet. And this already is really great because it saves on block space, right? If you have a two out of two multi-signature wallet, usually you would have two signatures stored on the blockchain to see that the uh, spend from this wallet is actually a proper spend and to do the verification. Now we can only do this with one signature. Let's dig into this a little bit deeper. With Lightning, actually every payment channel is a two out of two multi-signature wallet. So now Lightning channels, which in the future we probably have more and more, are just regular pay to public key hashes. So we save a lot of this block space. Now, when we think about channel factories and they probably come together with the L2 update and multi-party channels, we can probably have like 1000 people sharing a channel factory or multi-party channel. And this is just one Bitcoin transaction with one signature instead of a multi-signature wallet where we have like a thousand signatures. So this is really great and provides a whole different uh, way of scaling. You can also do this with all the transactions in one block. So let's assume that all transactions in a block are actually transactions coming from Schnorr signatures. What miners could do is, um, while mining a new block, they could squeeze basically all signatures, all the S values of signatures into one big aggregated signature and um, save a lot of extra block space because now we would only have to store the R values of the signatures and not the S values anymore. And this is also really great. And the last thing that is really, really cool about this is um, we can actually use this mechanism to hide even more information in this uh, multi-signature wallet. Because if people want to use this mechanism, they have to exchange partial signatures. And later, if you publish a different multi-sig output, then you can hide some more information in this. And this is called adapter signatures. This will be my next video. So you should definitely subscribe to my channel if you're interested in that. And these adapter signatures, they can actually be used to get rid of HTLCs in Lightning. We can get a much cooler routing scheme. It's still completely trustless. And it's um, a really crazy and cool thing. Before showing the code, uh, on a personal note, I'm really grateful that people are more and more willing to become a Patreon of this channel and support my work. This is really awesome because it helps me to have more time to create more of these videos and share more information about Bitcoin and Lightning Network. So I'm really happy if you continue to do so. Also, if you donate to my book fundraiser via Bitcoin or via the Lightning Network on my Telecoin page, I usually have a link to those in the top comment of these videos. So please make sure to check them out and let's dig into the code right now. So let's call the code from last time. We created two public private key pairs, A and B, and let's just print A and B and see the values of the public keys where R and P. And now we create the sum of the two keys, which is uh, AB, and it has the value J. And now I can create the sum of the signatures. So for the S values, I have to do the modulo operation. And for the points, I have to use the add points method because um, points are not added like regular numbers since they are points. Now I'm just gonna print out the values and I see that 8,0 is a signature for the public key J. I can verify that this is actually a signature by putting this into the verification message. So I put in all these values and now I'm gonna see that if I verify this on the key A and on the key B and also if I try to verify this on a different message, um, this is all gonna fail. I am really looking forward to see you in my next video when I talk about adapter signatures. If you're new to this channel, you might wanna check out my other videos because I have many interesting videos about the Lightning Network and where I explain this technology to people who are not that familiar with it yet. And if you need consulting, I offer consulting services. So. That is that. See you on the next video.